What's up, everybody? True and I come at you today. We got another Marvel Crisis Protocol video, and this time we have Psylocke's card reveal. And I'm excited to review this character card. And on Valentine's Day of all days, now I find that that's rather coincidental. I think <laughs> it's a coincidence there. Uh, and happy Valentine's Day out there to all the ladies and everyone out there that's celebrating today. I do. I have. A, uh, I have to wrap this video really quickly because uh, I have plans today for Valentine's Day as well that I have to. You know, I got some dinner reservation, all that stuff. So. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. And if you guys can, like, dislike, comment, subscribe. And, of course, I'm going to have more MCB content coming up. <laughs> if you guys can do that for me. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. That is the goal. That would help me out. And, of course, like I'm always going to have MCB content for you guys. So, All right, let's get to it. So, Psylocke, Elizabeth Braddock, uh, 334. So, Mystic Defense is 4. That's really cool. Expected. She is a really strong telepath, I believe, if I remember correctly. And... Um, and by the way, her character art design is really, really fantastic. And along with her model, she's a really good looking model. And I got to say this year, all the models that I painted, um, that I put together so far for this year's releases have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's nothing that I can complain about. I mean, Psylocke is just really well put together and she's standing on Sentinel parts here. It's really cool. And she has a side blade right here in her, in her hand. Um, just absolutely fantastic. They did a, a ton of mass games. You guys are doing a wonderful job with these figs. And I can't wait to see the painting stream for Psylocke, to be honest with you. Because uh, to paint these colors, I need some help. <laughs> I'm not really good at painting these colors. So this is really cool. So, um, yeah. So let's get to Psylocke here. And we got six health. Uh, four threat, size two, moves medium. Uh, so she's a four threat. Uh, let's see what she does. Uh, range two, energy attack. Ooh, okay. I like it. Uh, before choosing a target, this character chooses whether the attack is energy or mystic. I like this. Uh, we do have a decent amount of characters that have martial artists, and uh, those characters get, uh, count blanks uh, when it's a physical attack and um, physical or energy attack. And what she could do here. With those characters, she can get rid of uh, martial artists by changing this to a psychic attack. I like that. That's really cool. Um, very thematic for the character, I think. So this is really, really awesome. And uh, I'm already liking the first part of this attack. I mean, it's range two. Let's see if she has ways to get in that's outside of, you know, just her moving. Uh, after this attack, resolve this character. This character gains party with damage dealt, which is standard. Uh, wild before damage is dealt for each wild in the attack roll, the target character loses one power. Huh. So it's not sap. I like this, actually. I think this is pretty good. Losing power before uh, before damage is dealt is really, really good. Now, granted, rolling a wild, right, is one out of eight. But, you know, she's not gaining. She's already gaining power equal to damage dealt. To me, I think... What I think this is a sign of, and this is just me, I think this is a sign of maybe they're looking at changing sap, right? I think the characters that already have it are going to keep it. I think going forward, I think this is their way to address sap. Because I always thought sap was really, really strong. Uh, I don't, I don't, it's not that I don't want it in the game. I never really cared much. I just always thought it was really strong to, you know, do damage, gain power to damage dealt. Like, there's characters that do that, like Voodoo. And another one is Modok, and then from there, Rogue can do the same thing too. Uh, gain power to damage dealt, then sap your power away, and then they gain that power. I always thought that mechanic was just really good and a little too strong. I think this is a way going forward. I think they, I, I like this idea because you're already gaining power to damage dealt. Why do you need to gain the power on top of you know with saps and all that stuff? I like this. If this is the direction they're going forward for sap, I like it. Not to say that they are, I don't know. But if they are, really good. And this is a really good effect. I like this. Before damage is dealt, so then before they're dazed, right, you can take away all of their power. And that can be really crippling to a character. Because the thing is, is that when you when you when when a character gets dazed, you're gaining power equal to damage dealt, right? So you want all that power to pop back next turn. That's basically your comeback factor. If I'm taking away a whole bunch of power before you're just dazed can hamper a character going into turn two or turn three when they're on their injured side so this is really cool i like this i like this a lot um really cool attack here all right let's go to side blow Cybo. i said blow <laughs> Cybo. bow whatever um mystic attack range four four dice uh gain of power so this is a gainer this is how i 
Attack people that have four attack dice should always have a gainer and not power to get damage dealt. This is really good, so this is a gainer. On a hit, before damage is dealt, this character may advance toward the target character small. So this is her way to get in, right? So she can move, do a range four attack, <coughs> move small, get within two of a character, and then do her telekinetic I mean, well, get in range to telekinetic uh, katana onto a character. And um, again, this attack is mystic, so it gets through those characters that have martial artists and all that stuff. So that's really cool. I like it a lot. Uh, Psionic Assault. Uh, this is her spender. Range three, seven dice, three uh, power cost. Not expensive, really good. Before damage is dealt, target characters gain a stun special condition. And what I've noticed this year with all these characters is that at least the way they're testing these characters, it feels like they want to... Uh, give like they want to give you effects before damage is dealt right because there's a lot of things that don't go off in this game because it's not before damage is dealt um and i think they're starting to go away from that i think they want effects to happen uh before someone gets dazed because i mean once you spend a lot for a spender you know you spend all this power for a spender granted this is only three power cost but there's instances where you spend a whole bunch of power for a spender and you know there's an effect that goes off but you can't do it because it's after the attack is resolved you know the character gets dazed or ko'd or whatever I think they want these effects to go off. And, and this is a really good idea. And if that's the direction they're going forward, I'm here for it. So really good stuff there. And you gain stun. Stun is never fun. And, this, and there's no trigger for this, by the way. So that's really good. Telekinetic Combat Enhancement. Two power cost. This character immediately advances small. The next time it makes a Telekinetic Katana attack this turn, add two dice to the attack roll. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is her action economy. You see, there's always something to this, right? This is these are the characters. I this is this is a grid design. I, I I'm liking everything that I'm reading about this character right now. So she has a way to get in. Okay, she advances small, adds two dice. So she turns her telekinetic katana into a seven dice attack, and then from there she can. Yeah, I like this. A uh, super only just once per turn. Fair. That, that's the way it should be. Fair and balanced. I like it. Once per turn, this gets her in. She does her attack and adds two dice, so it makes it a seven dice attack. This is really good. I like this a lot. Tele uh, telepathic pre <laughs> precognition. Uh, okay, you can spend whatever you want. While this character is attacking or defending during the modified death step of the attack, it may spend any amount of power. Okay, so this is basically MODOK. So she has built-in rerolls, which is really good. Yes. Okay, so she has built-in rerolls. She's got a way to move in. She has a way to add dice, and she has a way to modify dice. This character is... I like her. I, I She feels like a fourth threat, right? Like, if she were a three threat, she'd be ridiculous, right? But now she's a fourth... Like, she... I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Like, her defenses are not bad at all. Um, You know, she needs help getting some power or whatever. But if you can play an affiliation that gives her power, why not? Like, she's pretty damn good. Uh, martial artist. Okay, so she has martial artists. If she's within range two, she can survive now. Okay, not bad. And she has stealth. There's a lot I like about this character. Like, I feel like they hit with Psylocke. She's really interesting. Um, She has stealth, so she's not going to be easy to kill. Um, You got to be within range three of her, right? She's got martial arts. If you're within two, she counts blanks. She can reroll her defense dice and her attack dice by herself. She's got action economy for two power. She can just move in small, do a telekinetic katana, Add dice to it. Like, this is really good. Like, I like the way she's designed. Um, on her intro, she just goes down by health. Honestly, like, I'm a huge fan of this character. I want to play her a lot. Like, the only thing is um, I would have to figure out ways to get her power, which is not hard. I mean, I could play her, you know, if I wanted to, I could put her in Brotherhood. Um, not that I would because, you know, she doesn't really add because, you know, add to the, um, what am I trying to say here? Like, she doesn't have a throw or anything like that for Magneto's leadership, but I can maybe play her in Mystique as a fourth threat, right? Not to, you know, she's most likely not going to be affiliated with Brotherhood, but, hey, if I wanted to splash in a fourth threat who's an assassin and uh, can do some damage to someone and can, like, harass the characters that have martial artists, why not? Um, she has built-in rerolls for herself so she can survive. I can find a way to get her power. Um... I'm liking this character a lot. Like, I'm a huge fan, and I've always been a huge fan of Psylocke, so I'm happy about this. I think, that, wow, like, I, I, dude, there's nothing this year that I've been disappointed with. And, and this is just, again, like, AMG, continue to keep doing you. Like, this is some good stuff, man. This is, I, I love Psylocke. 
<laughs> I can't wait to get her on a table. Anyways, guys, if you guys can, like, dislike the video, comment down below. Give me your thoughts on Psylocke, guys. Seriously, I'm happy with this character. I am stoked. Give me the teams that you're going to play her in. What do you guys actually think about Psylocke? Do you like her? Do you dislike her? Give me everything, guys. Talk to me in the comments down below. Like I said, of course, subscribe. Do all the things. And, of course, I'm always going to have MCP content for you guys out there. And if you guys can, enjoy the rest of your day. Keep playing MCP. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. And enjoy reading this card <laughs> for Psylocke. Wow. What a character. Take care, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.